Okay, in this lab, we are going to look at setting up an AV workstation. So when you read through this, we have a new video editor. This current machine is pretty low powered. It doesn't have, doesn't support dual monitors and it needs some redundancy for storage. So if we look in here, the workstation needs to support dual monitors can include a reliable storage solution that ensures data integrity, fault tolerance, and optimized performance for handling large video files. So one clue to pick out of here is we need to add storage and it needs to have fault tolerance, which means something called RAID, which is a way to take multiple hard drives, combine them into one and provide some redundancy. So if you lose one drive, the other drives have a copy of what's happening and we can go through that. So um, we'll have to set that up after we install it. So we need to update the graphics card to give them dual monitors and we need to upgrade the storage. So you have more drives and redundancy is set up. So first thing you wanna make sure it's turned off, which it is. Let's jump in and look at the motherboard. And I'm going to zoom in and scroll down a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the graphics card. So this one has VGA. We know we don't want that. We're going to do DVI and HDMI. So I'm going to drag that in. And we just need to have power. So this is a six pin power connector. So I'm going to click on my power supply and find my six pin connector. Here we go, six pin PCIe, plug that in. So we have the graphics card. Now we need to get the additional storage. And see there's one hard drive in here already. And it has a power cable and it has this SATA cable that provides the data connection. The power cable goes all the way back to the power supply. The SATA cable goes into the motherboard so that it can communicate with the motherboard. So I have three drives. I'm going to install all three of these into our chassis here. And now I need to get the cables. Now, one thing to note about the SATA cables, I'm going to jump over to the motherboard just so you can see this. When I click on the info for the motherboard, oh, I, that was the, not the motherboard. Here we go. Now I'm on the motherboard. Let's make this a little bigger. So you can see right now we're plugged into this spot, which is 10. When in doubt, you can do a control F, search for SATA, and you're gonna see here that in slot 10, it is labeled, there are six SATA slots, and you can't skip. You have to start at one, then the next one is two, then three, then four. You can't just put them wherever you want. So we're going from top to bottom, left to right. So top, and then left to right. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to come back here to my cables and I'm going to grab a SATA cable and plug one end into my hard drive, and the other end into port two of the motherboard. So I'm one, two. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other two. Plug it in there and then into port three. And then last but not least, Go to the hard drive and then port four. Okay, now so let's do power. So you can either click on the power supply or this other power cable, and we're gonna find these 15 pin SATA connectors. And I'm gonna go into the back of each card. So now we have power and we have the data connection. So we should be good. We have both storage and the new card. I'm going to go. Actually, I should look at the back because I need to get the video card connected. So the previous monitor is connected right here with the DVI. I'm just going to shift that down and connect that to the new DVI. Now I need to add a second monitor. So I'm going to go to peripherals, throw the new monitor on there. And let's look at the back of it. And it needs an HDMI connection and a power 
cable. So let's do HDMI first. Plug one end in here and plug the other end into my GPU. And now we're going to go power and then I'm going to connect to that to the back of the monitor. And then the other end needs to go into the wall. Okay, so I have power and I have video. So I'm going to flip this back around to the front. And what we could do, I mean, we could, oops, what am I done? I'll zoom back out. So, I mean, you can't power it on, but right now, and it would work, but each of those new hard drives would be set up as separate drives. They wouldn't give us the redundancy that we're looking for. So what we have to do is what's called RAID. We need to set those up so that those hard drives are in a RAID array. And so they look like one hard drive and they there's some fault tolerance built into it. So in order to set that up, you do that in the BIOS, which the BIOS is the operating system for the motherboard. It's a function of the motherboard, not of Windows. So when I boot it up, I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard while it's booting up so that I get into the BIOS. And every computer is a little different. Sometimes it's F2, sometimes it's F8, but you have to press a key while it's booting up before Windows loads. Okay, so now that I'm in the BIOS, I need to set up the, the RAID. So we're going to, let's see, what do we have in here? Okay, so you'll see several options in here that you can change in the BIOS. What we want to go to is System Configuration SATA Operation. So you can see there are different options in here. We're going to do RAID. So RAID is going to provide the, the RAID mode that gives us that, that functionality. So I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to hit exit. And what we'll need to do is now that we've turned RAID on, when it boots up again, we need to get into the RAID controller to the RAID software to do that. So I need to be watching the screen and hit the right button to get into the RAID controller when it reboots. Okay, there we go, control I. And it started on the screen, but it was control I. Okay, so now we need to create a RAID volume. So I'm going to hit return on here. Oh, make sure I'm in my screen. So I'm gonna hit return and you can give it a name. I'm just gonna leave it volume zero and hit return or enter. And now we can use our up and down arrows to change this. So RAID 0 is striping. That just puts everything together. Doesn't add any redundancy. RAID 1 does a mirror. So it will take, that's, you have to have an even number of drives and it will make an exact copy of one drive onto the other. Great for redundancy, great for read speeds, but it does, you only have half your capacity. And for this lab, we're going to do RAID 5 parity. That will stripe everything across the disks, but it also copies it as it stripes. So if you lose one disk, you still have two and they have a copy of everything. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get the redundancy of uh, RAID 1, but you don't lose half of your capacity. It's not as as much parity as RAID 1, but it's it's a really good way to go. So I'm going to hit enter to save that. Now we're on select disks, so I need to hit enter there to get us into the disks, and we're going to select the three disks that we added. So using my arrow keys, I'm going to go down and then hit the space bar to select the disk. So I have all three select, selected. I'm going to hit enter again so that we have those three selected. Now we're going to press the tab key and that will get us down to the strip size. Leave that at, the, at that and we won't change that around. And so we'll hit enter there to accept that. And then the default capacity, we'll just take that. That's giving us our full amount. So I'm gonna hit enter there. And now I should be down on create volume. So I went through all of that. It won't actually create the volume until you get down to this bottom section and hit enter. So I'm going to hit enter. 
It's going to say, you know, it has to reformat everything. So if anything's on there, it's going to get deleted. I'm going to hit yes to delete that. Now we can see down the bottom, we have three disks that are all in that RAID 5 um, array. So I can press the escape key to get to the previous menu saying, you sure you want to exit? I'm going to hit yes. So now that I've done that, it should boot up and those three disks will be in a RAID array. And I'm just gonna check things. If I right click on the Windows button in the bottom left and go up to disk management, you're gonna see, yeah, it wants us to initialize that disk, so to format it. And if I drag this off to the side, you're gonna see we have 1.57 terabytes. So it took all three of those disks, put them in a redundant fashion with RAID 5, and it's showing them as one big disk now as unallocated space. And so it wants us to initialize it. We don't need to do that for the lab. So I'm going to hit score lab and hit score. And we're good to go. Thanks for hanging in there with me.